My name is Sue Kent. I understood, I think at about the age of seven, I remember walking down the road and realising I wasn't the same. I realised that, but I had, I was in a group of people, there were about 500 people, and we had a lot of support, and we were really encouraged to have the same experiences, or different, but the same experiences as other children. So horse riding, we might have to do it differently, but we were encouraged to do it. Whatever our peers were doing, we were encouraged to get out there and do it. My best friend said, why don't you do something that no one else can do? And at the time, I was sort of back walking on my son because he had a bit of a bad back. So I, I saw a gap in the market. I, I sort of developed this with a therapist friend of mine to be specific to what I was able to do. Um, but I never used my feet before I did this. So a lot of people think, oh, she can do this because she's always used her feet. But I didn't use my feet. I was an office worker before this. I used my hands. I rarely use my feet. So this skill has come in the last sort of 11 years. I can feel all sorts of things through my feet. They're just as sensitive as hands. And my son built me this, um, this bench to go around so I didn't have to keep moving my stool. He was really supportive and he, he made my clinic for me. And he really understands my needs and, um, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's, he, he did all this seating for me so I can just swivel about the place. My development training has been really good. It just depends if you meet someone who is um, able to understand how you work. A lot of people are quite negative about it when I was learning, but I met um, some really good guys from America who knew what I was trying to do and helped me develop my techniques. Had I not been old enough and had I not had the sort of friends I had, I don't think I would have been able to do this career. It's very undermining subtle discrimination and it needs to be tackled, which I did. I'd not experienced this before and I got to 40 um, and a lot of other people experience it younger and I think that must be much more difficult. I was a bit harder skinned and more able to deal with it. I really love my job. I love helping people. I love making use of my feet. and It makes me feel very competent that I can do this and uh, there's a lot of other things I can't do so it's really a dream job for me I wish I'd found it earlier in life having a car um, really changes your life and your ability to work because I can't carry that much and and uh, managing money on the on the train and the tube and the buses is difficult and managing um, you know managing bags and things like that so having a car allows you access to all areas so to speak so if it's raining I can't use an umbrella I can't you know do up my coat very well so getting from A to B in bad weather uh, it, and my hands get so cold you know as I said even putting money or credit cards into a machine outside is really difficult. So those accessibility issues are really a challenge. There are so many more, you know, there are more disabled people, you know, the BBC are finally getting on board and showing them in everyday life, because we're all here in everyday life, but television never featured anybody. You had the token person, but now there seems to be much more. And until we see everybody around and that accessibility so that be out in public be using buses so pe we're not shut behind closed doors we're out there in society there's a lot of us a lot of people are disabled and i think by the public are now changing their attitude and become much more accepting and less um, aggressive and, and more helpful and understanding and understanding that maybe things need to change like you know you know, things in lifts need to come lower and, and door handles need to be adjusted and they need to be buttons on this. Um, and I think society are, are becoming much more aware of our needs. <laughs>